Hey, this is Chris McNamara, and this is the first kind of super topo story I'm doing. And I'm doing it for the route Squeeze Play, which is, uh, or is it Lost World, which is a variation on, um, I guess, Lurking Fear, which is also a variation on the West Betris of El Cap. A lot of variations going on there. Hope you followed that. But here's the line, and here's where it actually joins up with uh, Lurking Fear slash the West Buttress. So it's really just this section here, and here's where the two variations are, Squeeze Play versus Lost World. So let's go to the topo. And I'm going to follow along with the photos here. So here we are getting racked up in El Cap Meadow. We just brought one little backpack and one long lead rope with a little extra rope to bring up gear. Oh yeah, we were doing a one day ascent um, trying to get the record, which we did. Um, trying to do it all in daylight, that's my big thing. Doing things into the night is usually just not that much fun. Here's the rack, brought way more pins than we needed to. As you'll see, we did need all those big cams. Um, but overall, it was, it was pretty light. It's a A3 route not that hard you know probably only a little bit harder than lurking fear but a little more sustained here's looking at from the bottom of the route first pitch is uh, five seven with either c2 or five ten goes real quick and there's mark melvin my partner starting up cruising it nice little view we didn't get the most alpine start as you can see and then here I am jugging up to the first anchor, Mark short fixing and leading off on here, which is pitch two. Um, we we're trying to do this clean. We didn't know if it could be done clean or not. So this was probably the first clean crux, calling it C2 plus, plus. And Mark actually took a few falls at the top, little wires. It's pretty tricky. Um, this section right here, right before the belay, was tricky, awkward. There I am cleaning it. And then I took over the lead here on the third pitch. There's a hook lunge, which um, wasn't too bad. Now, if you're wondering why I'm wearing such ridiculous colors, this is all for Tom Evans. And of course, I get back to the meadow after this climb thinking that he'd have great photos. And um, I don't think he was even looking at this part of the wall from El Cap Bridge. This part of the wall doesn't really show up that well. Here's me leading that pitch, looking back down at Mark. And these next few pitches went real quick because there's a bunch of bolts. And um, this is the spot where the two variations um, diverge. Lost World, as you can see here on the topo, goes up right. And we took Squeeze Play because it just looked like it was going to be the better variation. And after climbing it, I think it is. So here I am, I believe, on pitch five. And this is a spot where there was, uh, oh, this crack was kind of not super sweet. Having offset um, aliens or offset Camelot X4s was nice. Here there was a missing bolt. And the only way I got by it was by kind of intertwining stoppers and top stepping. And it was really hard. I'm 5'10", I have a pretty good reach, and it was really hard for me. So unless you're really tall, this is going to be tricky. You may need a bolt kit. You may need a little cheat stick. Uh, or maybe it's been fixed by now. Here I am leading off on pitch six, as you can see over here on the topo. And by the way, um, I made this topo, and I'll put it on the Super Topo website for free over here on the um, Lost World beta page. If you can't find it, just Google squeeze play El Capitan, Lost World El Capitan, some variation of those words should get you there. Um, cruising along, I forget what time of year it was, but they were longer days. It was I remember it was really nice to be in the shade. And this is one of the reasons we did the route. It has some cool ledges. So this is this really cool belay ledge below pitch seven here. We'll move up on the topo. Um, and pitch seven is kind of the classic one, this pretty epic corner. Um, this photo doesn't really do it justice. That one does it more justice. This is after I let it. This had the, f 
the second kind of clean climbing crux, I call it C2+, plus, um, tiny Camelot X4s and offset stoppers were key. Let's see if we can keep this going. Just kind of like zooming in, looking down on that pitch. And pitch eight was the, the crux, and I really wanted to get it clean. So for example, here's a move I did pretty quickly off the belay where I intertwined three stoppers and then kind of fished this stopper placement. You might have to kind of view this on a bigger screen to see this, but I was pretty proud of myself here. Um, kind of a cool um, move to move past a, a crappy pin scar. And then uh, following that, there was a C3 or A2 under this roof. That was actually a little scary. Um, definitely more heads up. This is me looking down at Mark at the belay. Um, so right he about here is where I did that fishing move. This roof here was kind of heads up. I think it was in inverted cam hooks. And um, if you fell, it kind of seemed like you might swing into this corner. So um, a little more dangerous if you want to keep it safe than you might end up nailing there but um, as you'll see I, this route will go clean and I hope someone will do it um, here I am looking back down use tons of runners on this pitch horrible rope drag here's where I finally I had to nail or I might have nailed after this um, I call it a2 beaks arrows or c3 plus um, it would be very clean if you did fall. I think you might be able to hand place bigger arrows and beaks or maybe like just one cheat stick move or two would get you through this. But it was this 10 foot section was the only reason the route didn't go clean. So if you want to nail the first clean ascent of something, I recommend um, getting after it. So now we're going to move to uh, one of the more unique aid placements I've ever done. This came on uh, pitch, I'm just getting lazy and not numbering things, pitch nine. And it was this weird pod, and you can't tell, but behind this, it totally opens up so that you can't really put a cam in it. So I didn't know what to do, so I just kind of bunched up a sling and made a um, kind of 1890s style stopper. Or uh, I think they also use these types of knots in uh, certain old school areas in um, Europe. Um, blanking the Elbenstein, or I'm, I'm blanking on the name exactly. But um, first time I'd ever done this, and I don't know if it was mandatory, but using a cam here would have been really hard. Um, maybe a big knot, uh, nut or hex might have worked, but I was kind of proud of myself. This thing worked. I was psyched. Here's Mark jugging up to clean that pitch um, pretty cool corner you know these these pitches I would rate kind of you know three and a half out of five stars you know pretty cool not epic but you know that's that's how the route is pretty cool not epic a good way to avoid crowds a good way like if you've already done lurking fear or zodiac and you want to do something not too hard and not see crowds I'd recommend this one um, more of Mark jugging up to me and then he led off on the crappiest pitch on the route probably very awkward especially because he's wearing running shoes um, I guess he just hasn't gotten the memo about approach shoes he has running shoes or climbing shoes but um, an animal that guy for t leading this pitch with just running shoes uh, very awkward chimney bring the big cams it was kind of wet it, there was this flake up here that was not inspiring um, but when you're done leading the pitch you do get to this inspiring ledge um, very cool spot this is right below where the uh, uh, this that's this ledge right here which if I was numbering things would be the 10th belay and then this is the last pitch mark leading up to where the west buttress comes in again I was lazy and didn't uh, label this but this is the west buttress coming in right to left lurking fear would be coming in left to right here and then from here you join lurking fear slash the west buttress so here's mark leading up him looking down at me on the super sweet ledge um, i believe this ledge down here is called that like el caps arms bivy it's that bivy that you can get from lurking fear me having fun mark having fun 
Um, and then from here, I took off and led. This is uh, part of the Grand Traverse leading into Lurking Fear. Uh, great lighting, cool shot. I think we're happy because we know that we're going to do pretty much this whole route in daylight. Um, I think it was only dark from maybe the last pitch or two. And here we are getting towards the top. Sun was setting. But now we're on Lurking Fear and we're flying and we're on top. And Mark was a genius. He brought an avocado. Uh, pretty awesome to have an avocado at the top of a one-day ascent. Pretty luxurious. So big fan of fast and light, but it's always nice to bring one or two heavy things. For example, here I am, the super light um, Petzl headlamp. Not recommended if you're going to plan on climbing at night, but I was pretty sure we could do this in daylight, and we uh, more or less did. I forget the exact time, but I think it was like 15 or 16 hours. It was... Um, Actually, I have no idea how long. I'll have to go back and look at the trip report. But um, I do have a trip report. do have more photos that you can check out online, and you should download the topo and uh, consider doing this route if you want something moderate, off the beaten track, not mega classic, but uh, pretty fun.